If you understand the tourism industry, it would make sense why this is such a, a powerful uh, community, wh why it's so compelling to tourists. Really, there's four things. It's called the four A's that tourists care about, which is affordability, accessibility, authenticity, and activity. Affordability doesn't mean cheap. It means, can I afford to go? So we have our problems with that because our ADR, average daily rate, what hotels charge, continues to go up and up and up and up. But as you can see from our bed tax collections, it doesn't really seem to hurt our business very much. As far as activities go, we have every tourism activity you could consider except two, which is cold weather sports and mountains. Other than that, Miami Beach and more importantly Miami because the, com the consumer does not see Miami Beach as a separate area. In fact, 50 miles outside of our community or 20 miles outside of our community, if you do research, Miami Beach is the strip of sand attached to Miami. People don't see it as a separate city. Locally, again, we're very provincial and I see Miami Beach. In fact, when I was a kid growing up on South Beach, going to um, Central Beach Elementary, as far as we were concerned, Miami Beach only went up to 21st Street as kids. If you live north of 21st Street, well, that wasn't Miami Beach. And then once I went to junior high school and they brought kids all the way south of the Nautilus District, so then Miami Beach expanded to 41st Street. But if you live north of 41st Street, as far as we were concerned, that wasn't Miami Beach. And then once I went to high school, of course, it went all the way from, what is it, Biscayne Street to somewhere up in Sunny Isles. So then Miami Beach became, to us, the whole island. But if you didn't live on the island and go to Beach High, well, they, you were not from Miami Beach. And I still hear business owners and professionals and politicians with that same silly argument that there's Miami Beach and there's Miami. Because from a tourism point of view, there is no differentiation. In fact, truth is the Miami brand is the brand. It's, very, it's where the airport is. That's what people know. They think Lauderdale, uh, Hollywood, everything else is included as well. Consumers don't know the difference. So the Miami brand becomes very important. So affordability is key. Accessibility. I can't visit a place that I can't get to. Yes, there are some people who do adventure travel and they try to go to those places you can't get to and not being able to get there becomes the trip, but that's a very small percentage. So, depending on how you look at it, thank you to American Airlines for the enormous investment they've made in Miami because we have accessibility. You can get here now from anywhere in the world. You can fly nonstop now from Barcelona. KLM now flies here nonstop. Emirates is thinking about it. You can get here now from anywhere in the world. So we are very accessible. Um, so we, we've talked about three, affordability, accessibility, and activity. But the key is authenticity. Because the saying is people go to old places to see new things or they go to new places to see old things. And we are both a new place and an old place. We are a cutting edge city. We are the, one of these new city states that people around the world are looking at where we have greater identification with other places than with our actual geographic area. We have more connection, for example, to South America perhaps than to the rest of Florida. So we get that sort of attention. People understand that we are an old place and a new place. Demographically, people who study demographics say that Miami is what the rest of the country will look like 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now. And the great thing is a lot of our issues we've worked out. This might have been an awful place as far as Jim Crow goes and as far as treatment of Hispanics and maybe Haitians uh, don't get the type of uh, fair treatment that other groups do. But we're working on those problems, and I think we've worked out a lot of them that other areas are only starting to deal with. So that gives us an enormous opportunity. Authenticity also is authenticity of place. And because of restoration, we have a place that doesn't look like we're anywhere else. I understand that there might be an equally large or larger collection of Art Deco properties in Haifa, because the mostly Jewish German architects who designed them, when they left Germany, they either came here or they went to what was then Palestine and became Israel. Um, but I haven't been to Haifa, so I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. So we have this unique look. And what it does for us is it creates this visual icon. And whether we are old or new, to quote Carl about you know, taking the old, but, but how do we move it forward? We will move it forward technologically. Clearly, the buildings will be just as up to date, and they'll be LEED certified. That'll all happen. That has to happen. But the look becomes the uniqueness that people will notice. And iconography, it's not even a word, as an icon, people will be able to look at South Beach and see South Beach equals Miami Beach equals Miami. That look will drive the train. No different than if you see that one curvy road in San Francisco. It's got to spend a lot of time in San Francisco to find that road if you don't know where it is, but it says San Francisco. If you see the Grand Canyon, it, it's a iconic. If you see um, the, bank, the bridge going over the left bank, you know you're looking at Paris, and so on and so forth. So we have that. You can't create that. 
you, you can create it, but it takes 50 years or 100 years until it becomes authentic. Vegas did that. Vegas didn't exist 50 years ago. They've created it. Of course, they've created it by copying other areas. So if you see the Empire State Building or you see the Statue of Liberty, you could be looking at New York or you could be looking at Vegas. Um, we have, if you see glass block and pink neon and an arch, you know what you're looking at. Now, people call it Deco. They call it Nouveau. They, they lump it all together. They don't know what they're calling it because, again, they don't know, but it doesn't matter. You know, we would say, oh, no, no, that's not Deco, that's Mimo, or that's not Deco, that's Populux, or that's not Deco, that's Modern, or that's, no, that's Nouveau, but it doesn't matter. It's no different than in going in France and going to see a cathedral, and do you know if it's Gothic or if it uh, comes from a different period? Do you have any idea? And ultimately, does it matter if the columns are, are uh, Doric or Ionic or whatever it is? You don't know or care. You just feel like you've seen it. We have that same opportunity here.